Thank you, everyone. Um, maybe what we could do is just uh, start by introducing uh, yourselves. So maybe we could start uh, right here with Patricia. Maybe just tell us very shortly, you know, what you do and what role you play in the ecosystem uh, in your country or your region. So my name is Patricia Zolentima. I'm from DRC. I'm involved in a women empowerment uh, more than 20 years right now. Uh, I have launched the first uh, Uber for women with uh, a woman driver. And I also opening the first accelerator for women in DRC more than uh, seven years. And uh, yeah, and also I co chair the leadership uh, council at Harvard. Thank you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. I'm Lotfi Belkhair. I'm originally uh, uh, from the city of Algeria. I have a PhD in theoretical physics from the United States. I also work in research and development and uh, new business development in Xerox. I also have a master's in management of technologies. I started my own company in Silicon Valley, and that I led for about 10 years. Then uh, later I moved to teach innovation entrepreneurship at the University of McMaster in Canada. Currently, I am the academic director of the Futurist Institute here in Algeria. I'm also the associate director for entrepreneurial transformation at Qatar University. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. I'm Samad Sar Abdi, uh, social entrepreneur, uh, coming based in Djibouti. Uh, I'm founder and Director Executive for the main uh, first incubator put in place in Djibouti, the City ID. So we we uh, this uh, what is uh, what you call uh, an incubator. We train empower uh, youth uh, on digital economy, and with a special focus on women, uh, people excluded of the system, like as well as uh, uh, disability people and rural people coming uh, along the, the, the continent with a focus. Uh, in Horn of Africa as well as African ecosystem. So happy to be here in this panel. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Steve Chumba uh, from Cameroon. Um, so I'm uh, a board member of AfriLabs, and AfriLabs is a pan African organization of um, herbs. We are now present in about 52 countries with um, uh, 400 members supporting entrepreneurs. I'm the executive director of Active Spaces, and Active Spaces is one of the first tech hubs on the continent. Um, so about 12 years ago when we started, uh, we were about five hubs, co-founders co of AfriLabs. And so for the past 12 years, we've been really building ecosystem, supporting entrepreneurs, engaging with different stakeholders, government, universities, banks, investors, and so on. So I'm quite interesting, interested you know, to having this conversation and maybe taking it further. Thanks. Hello, everyone. My name is Aurore Belterga. I'm from Cameroon, entrepreneur in education technology. So we are developing some solution in cybersecurity education for kids, school, and also to enable parents. I'm also running a female tech hub in Cameroon since seven years, where we empower women in coding, but also where we train women with digital skills. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. First of all, welcome to our guests. So I'm Nordin Wadah, director of startups in the Algerian ministry uh, in charge of knowledge-based economy, startups, and SMEs. So um, I've been a researcher in robotics, and then actually I joined this journey two years ago, and I'm glad uh, to try to contribute building a local ecosystem, and then uh, by this initiative, connect it to all African ecosystems. Thank you all. So our panel uh, discussion is about uh, strengthening the ecosystem. So maybe we, we can start with you, uh, Steve. Uh, from your experience in Cameroon and elsewhere, what would you say are the main hurdles that the ecosystem is facing? The, 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 the main hurdles that the ecosystem is facing. So maybe let's start at country level. 
um, what are the, 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 the main hurdles. I think it's, first of all, understanding uh, where we're operating. Now, I operate a, in the startup um, world, uh, so very tech-oriented um, uh, ecosystem. And I, I, and I think it's quite important for us to make that difference. Uh, you mentioned earlier, startup, SMEs. And I, and, and I like to make that, that, dif that, 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 that difference. And I would stick in most of my intervention would be specifically for the startup ecosystem and not specifically for the, for, 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 for the, for the SMEs. I think part of the problem starts with us even starting that definition. What is it, a startup? What is the startup? And I think the work that we did yesterday in terms of policy, in terms of startup acts, and defining that, and, and, and that really starts there. So at a country level, starting to really understand, when we started the work as active spaces, and I remember sending one of my colleagues to universities and talking to young people, say, hey, we are active spaces, we are in the city center, come, use our space, you have internet, and all that. And the young people will say, how much do you pay for this? We'll say, like, it's free. And they'll say, ah, ah, how come, why? What do you want? What are you looking for? So we had a lot of work of even educating people in what uh, a tech hub is, uh, what an incubator is. And not just with the students, but educating uh, even the government in terms of what it is that we are trying to achieve. Um, so once we've done the definition of understanding what a startup is, and I think it's quite important to really understand or maybe identify all the actors or the different stakeholders uh, in the ecosystem and what they're supposed to do. And I think that's one of the work that we've not quite done yet. One of the examples that I'll usually take is today herbs, right? We are herbs and our focus is supporting entrepreneurs. But that job description is not quite clear because we don't just support entrepreneurs. We actually, part of the work that we do in herb is actually capacity building. We have young people coming to us that don't even know how to write an email. So, and then we have to do this job. So, but for what I'm saying is we need to start identifying the universities and the, 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 the university and making sure that this is their job and this is what they need to be doing so that when young people come to us, we focus on actually building their businesses. So the hurdle would be understanding the ecosystem, identifying the stakeholders and actually assigning a proper job description to all the different actors and people should stick to what they can and should be doing. And, and better connecting them, the, the, the main actors of the Of the course, one, once you've then identified and the job description has been properly assigned, then you see how they can actually get together and work together so that when a university has finally finished to kind of train a student or a young person, and they can say, oh, you want to build a business, go to the hub or go to this, and then the hub will focus on actually helping that young person in you know, because one of the issues is we, we, we've, have, we've taken entrepreneurship to mean, oh, you know, you can create your own job. And we've actually shifted the problem. Um, so, yeah. So, those will be some of the issues. And obviously, I'm not going to talk about financing because we, we, we know that that's some of the, uh, the other hurdle in terms of building that ecosystem. Thank you, Steve. Maybe, uh, Lutfi, uh, since we're talking about universities and we're talking about capacity building, maybe you can uh, weigh in and, and give us your perspective on that? Yes, exactly. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so you're talking, talking about, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you're next, uh, Patricia. No, 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 no. <laughs> you're next. Uh, sorry. Thank you. So I'd like to take uh, a slightly different uh, point of view and angle here. Uh, being trained in physics, I like to take a, what I call a fundamentalist view to, um, and I would say it's not about building a startup ecosystem, it's about start building an innovation ecosystem and recognizing that startups is the best and most effective vehicle to bring that innovation because we now understand deeply why large companies have very hard time innovating, at least in a radical way. But my approach to building the ecosystem is more really focused that if, one, if we're really serious about doing it, is that we have to focus on building the human capital before we build all the other aspects which are important but in my view are secondary. Uh, and the idea is that the human capital is not, we're not about talking about building capacities in particular skills, but developing the human capital that's going to come up with the ideas 
that are going to create the value that you're looking for. And recognizing that ideas are actually the bedrock of civilizations. A civilization that has no idea, a nation that has no ideas, will go down and until those ideas come back. But the ideas have to have three elements. One of them is that they have to be original, bold, and I would say even crazy ideas. Uh, not the kind of incremental ideas. Uh, Japan has proven that if you just rely on incremental innovation, on improving what America has developed, you can make some progress, but eventually going to hit diminishing returns. And Japan has dropped from number two to number five economy. China is coming back and realizing that manufacturing and low cost manufacturing are not gonna get them very far, so now they're outsourcing manufacturing to the like of Indonesia and Vietnam, and are looking to move from made in China to designed in China. And we're starting to see some real bold and original ideas and innovations coming from out of China. So we need those mindset shift in our youth, in our human capital to say that yes, you can, and you can have those bold, crazy, original ideas that are not just another Uber. I'm not saying yes, it is not a great startup, they are. But we need to move beyond just imitating what the West are trying to catch up. We need to move into a mode of quantum leaps, ideas that, that's what I call crazy ideas. The second thing is that those ideas need to be purposeful. That the purpose is more than just becoming a billionaire or a millionaire, where the purpose is bigger than the startup, bigger than the entrepreneur themselves. And this is what you see in Silicon Valley. Entrepreneurs are there to change the world. A measure of success for an entre a Silicon entrepreneur is not to be bought out by Google and make $20 million, and is to go public, to change the world, to create a company that will really change the world. Uh, Steve Jobs' purpose was to change the world with technology. Bill Gates was to put a, uh, a PC in every home. Uh, Larry Page of Google is to organize the world's information. Elon Musk is to bring sustainable energy to the world and then go to Mars if plan A doesn't work, which is why he led SpaceX. This is the purpose-driven entrepreneurs that we want to create. The third one is that those ideas have to be efficacious. They have to create wealth, create jobs. And we need to move beyond measuring our KPIs based on how many startups, how much funding. How many jobs have you created? How many more sales? How many new wealth and value have you created? Those are the, but in order to do that, we need now to equip our human capital with more just coding skills and programming and management. We need to equip them with the soft skills, and there is a universe of soft skills, and also the emerging technologies. There's a huge opportunity, there's 12 trillion dollars of incremental value in sustainable development, most of which can come from the developing world. 380 million jobs that could be created addressing climate change, uh, recycling, renewable energies, uh, smart cities, and so on. And most of those are in the developing countries. Most of those are in the African continent. Those are the, 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 the impact that we want those ideas to have. But in order to do that, we need to develop this human talent in a different way than universities are doing so. And this is what I come back to universities, that the universities themselves have to transform, have to change. And when we talk about bringing resources, we don't need new resources. We need a much more efficient use of the existing resources. If you look at a university, you have the human talent from the professors, you have the development talent from the students, you have the labs, the infrastructure, the space, that is maybe used at five or 10 percent. Why don't we use those universities to bring that infrastructure, to bring that talent? I mean, 80 percent of the money that a uni startup needs is in payroll. What if we use it the, uh, the professors, the students, to actually advance new products and new innovations without any additional incremental cash? That's a, a very efficient, but could be also very impactful form of those resources. And so this is what I mean by developing this new human capital in, in a way that has, brings original and bold ideas, are actually purpose-driven, uh, and are actually efficacious. So we're, we're talking about a paradigm, paradigm shift a here. Total totally. paradigm shift. And, and better connecting the universities and the, all the, the actors to the uh, to the startup ecosystem. 
not, if I am just summarizing, not more resources, but using the resources in a better, more efficacious way, as you said. Uh, exactly. Patricia, what would be your um, perspective uh, from your experience on this use of resources? Do, we do, like, do you think we have enough resources, let's say in DRC or elsewhere in the continent, or do you think we need more resources to strengthen the ecosystem? I will, I will try uh, what you say. I think we have resources. The only thing we have to structure what we have. So this is the first thing. The second one, uh, I manage an accelerator, the first one in the RC. I have, uh, is a woman basing accelerator. Most of women business owner, the, 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 the gap that they have is because they don't have resources. Uh, why? They can build a successful business, but when it comes to scale the business, they have an issue. Why? Because of the foundation. They don't have too much resource. And in DRC, we know that we have an issue with uh, infrastructure. Because for me, the, like say, building um, human, uh, human uh, building capability and uh, having a competence people in your business is the only thing that will help you to scale up. We love to say we want money, we want, but it's not about money, it's really about resource. It's about having efficiency people in your business, and then when you have uh, people, you know that you can scale up uh, easily. So at, at my accelerator, the first thing that we do is to bring experts to help a woman, to, to help them to scale up the business. I love to say, we love to want to say about women empowering women, but how can you empower women when you don't give them the resource to, to go to a next level? One of the issues as a woman a business owner we face is we get fund, we don't know how to use this fund, and then you fail after five years. And most of the startup, after five years, if they don't scale up, they fail. Why? Because of the lack of a resource. And that is why I think, and I agree with them, that we have, maybe, maybe now, or university have to teach entrepreneurship. We don't learn entrepreneurship uh, in a university. Most of us, we scale the business after we went back at the business school. I'm from a law, I'm a lawyer, okay? And I starting business very, I have 20 years. Uh, in 20 years in entrepreneurship, I starting, I have 20, 22. And uh, after 20 years, I would say so only five years ago that I scale up my business to another level. Why? Because when I started, I started like everybody. I wanted to be uh, owner of, uh, of uh, my company, but not with the real skill to scale up. When I went back at Harvard is when I decided to bring my business to another level. So I think today with African University, because we have skill, we have, uh, you know, we have amazing people in Africa. We have uh, people with clever, clever women. How can we now build the infrastructure to teach women and even men how you have to go to another level? Because we can't continue to play small. The, the things with Africa, we still play small. In French country, we don't have many startup or accelerator, they're raising a lot of funds. Most of the startup raising a lot of funds from English country, Africa English country, not Francophone. Why? Because we don't teach entrepreneurship. Women or men, they don't know how to have access an investor. You know? And this is the, 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 the issue. The issue is the, it's not about uh, funds, it's not about connecting with investors, because you can be connecting with investors, but if you don't have a resource, you will fail. And how can we overcome, overcome challenge this? By creating at the university the program to teach uh, entrepreneurs how to start business. And I love to say to all the new entrepreneurs, the startup, start from where? I have been employed. And my boss, she's the one that she teach me business. And because I, I'm working for someone, I learn it to wake up early, I learn it to have a, a process, I learning how to talk to a client, and then when I start to become a owner of my own business, I say I want to be better. But better, I go back to the school. I train myself. And this is, the, what this is I think, for me, is the key 
for the startup to succeed tomorrow in Africa. Thank you, Patricia. So capacity building, learning the right skills, and maybe also going through one step of being uh, an employee, learning what it is to be an employee, and finding the right talent, also connecting to the right talent. Aurore, um, maybe I can ask you to follow up on this, you know, from a women perspective, a women startup perspective in Cameroon. Uh, what could you add to what Patricia just said? Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm aligned with what Patricia was saying because being an entrepreneur with more than seven years and when it's come to creating job because doing an entrepreneurship is not just like, um, like a fashion. At the end of the day, we have to play our role to create a job and to scale up. And when you are still like at the early stage after seven years, it means that there's a lot of things that you miss. You miss because you don't have access to resources. Let me take one of example in my case. Uh, I will say so many women in tech, for example, who are in technology. We have idea, but many of us lack technical skills. And sometimes having uh, people with competency who can develop our solution is critical. That is why I think for ecosystem should always should also think about capacity building, not only for entrepreneurs, but for those who are going to work with us. Because entrepreneurs can have a brilliant idea, as we have now. I want to develop an ER crypto money, but in Africa we don't have resources. We have people who are going in school, even to be an engineer, but they cannot develop a software. And I'm facing the same thing, actually. We have our mobile application apps. We are working on it since one year because we have some young who have not technical uh, capacity to go far. And this is really a, a problem. So ecosystem is not just to have an idea to have fun because for me, I have fun. But it's not about to have fun at the end is also to have people who can build your startup. If you are still working with idea, we don't have people who can work with you, is a problem. Because you cannot do marketing, contability, everything. You need, as a company, to build a strong uh, leadership or to have access with people who have this competency. And in Africa, we still lack of it. And it's a problem with women issue. Let's say like that. Thank you. All right, so finding the right talent to build your company, I guess this is uh, one of the challenges that women and men uh, far, you know, may have as a challenge. Now, moving to Djibouti, uh, Samatar, um, from your perspective, what would be uh, the main challenge? Is it infrastructure? Is it uh, human resources? What would be the, the main challenge for your ecosystem in Djibouti? Thank you, Malut. Uh, I think the main point already mentioned by the colleague here, the main uh, problem it's, uh, can be uh, focusing on the, the, what you call the problem of human capital. I think it's the main problem for all entire Africa, uh, from my perspective, not only for Djibouti, I think for Cameroon, for Algeria as well, uh, all the countries. And the real problem, if you looking for maybe what happened really on the ground, if you see, if every year, for example, we have a uh, top uh, thousand university, uh, what you call the list of Shanghai. Uh, can you imagine for the top thousand uh, universities, only 18, I think 18 universities is among this list. So the main problem is uh, the only universities cannot bring add values for entire ecosystem. That's why the main role of incubators, accelerators, the tech hubs can play usually at the, at the, at the ground to, uh, to, to bring, you know, to keep on the, the ground uh, the, the ability to, to work closely with entrepreneurs because uh, they already talk about soft skills, the, the agility to, 
to be an entrepreneur. And at the end of the day, uh, I noted also the semantic problem about startups, SMEs. Of course, startups is just a period. You, it's one, three years uh, or, uh, already, yeah? One of, between one and three years. It's just an idea to push on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the ground. But the objective, the main objective is how to create SMEs. Because the SMEs only in Africa, as well in Djibouti and all the countries, can create wealth, can create jobs, not startups. We, we have to be frank. Startups is just a, it's a, a, a hype coming from uh, Western uh, Silicon Valley. I want to be a startup. Okay, cool. But what add value to do at the end of the day to create wealth, to create jobs, and to participate in the, this gross economy all of our country? Don't, the main things is lack of talent, the lack of education. And we talk about education on IT, digital education, but also uh, financial education. Because when we want to start to create something, an enterprise, or a startup, you, have, you mean you have to have some knowledge how to sustain an to idea, to the growth, and to a real enterprise. You have to be, have some tools to, to, to become an entrepreneur, or what you call captain d'industrie in France. So you have to know those knowledge. Uh, and this is a very crucial. Uh, last year in Africa, uh, I think we raised uh, among uh, something like 5,000, uh, no, 5 billion US dollars for the startups in Africa. And uh, this is, for some people, this important, but uh, if you compare to the growth of our entire economy, it's, it's nothing. So uh, the, 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 the thing is how to, to use all this energy, because Africa and Djibouti as well, we have more than 70% of the population under 18 and 25. And if you see every year, and I don't have the real statistic for Djibouti, unfortunately, but every year we have something like 20 million job need in the market in Africa. And in the same time, only 10 million jobs is created. So who have to fill this gap? I think the main role of the incubator accelerator is how to follow the government or private sector's uh, effort because in, we talk about ecosystem. In the ecosystem, you have the government side. In Djibouti, since one year and a half, we have a new Ministry of Digital Economy. This is very new. When we start uh, this incubator, nobody talk about startups, nobody talk about uh, incubators as well. So now we have the effort of gov government side. Okay, what about the private sector? The, the, what do you call SMEs, uh, etc. How does uh, you talk about infrastructure? Uh, uh, in Djibouti, we have, you know, around 12 sub-cable uh, marines, uh, I think is per capita, is the well-connected country in Africa. But at the same time, what the issue for the job, uh, uh, what the issue for the creating jobs is not, uh, you know, the, so we have a lot of work to do together as an ecosystem, because uh, this ecosystem, uh, Steve mentioned that, they have to be educated also by government side, how to be agile, how to be, strengthen this uh, effort driving by the top, by the bottom to the up, and how to use all this energy. And I think the future for that is uh, how to put more and more uh, about education. This is very important. How, because we talk also about, uh, yesterday we talked about how to work together as an ecosystem, because you have to be cross-border. What some ideas, if they run this ecosystem similar to our culture like Cameroon, we, we don't need to copy and paste a model from Silicon Valley and model from even Nigeria. We are not compared to Nigeria. Nigeria, 200 million people. Djibouti is less than 1 million. So let's work together as a cross-border thinking how this ecosystem can be beyond the country, look at very regional level. Uh, maybe we'll uh, give an idea for Algerian momentum because this is a momentum. The Africa Star Conference can be at momentum to think about that. Uh, Algerian, they have very huge uh, vision. Uh, sometimes you need to have a champion. I think we have to salute the, this young minister from Algeria. He's very he's driving energy and he catalyzes all this. But it can be uh, uh, useful to see beyond Algeria. Maybe Algeria is part of MENA region. So 
yesterday they seen an agreement between Tunisia and Algeria. It can be replicated in the MENA region. Uh, how to push all those energy? Uh, maybe if you have one example from Algeria, can do the same job in Djibouti or as well in Egypt. We talked about yesterday about the passport of the startups. Uh, it can be an uh, idea to do uh, instead to uh, copy and paste at the local. We have some startups can be uh, come from Algeria to work on Tunisia as well or even uh, in another region. So this is kind of uh, you, to uh, optimize our resources is very like. Uh, also, I, I talk about uh, I want to talk about the idea of fund. The problem of fund is not existing. If you have ideas, if you have the motivation to do that, the fund is there. And the fund is there. It's not a problem. That we have to demystify the idea for some use. Say, I need the fund to start. You don't need the fund to start. Start first. Do something. Failure is not an option. You can fail. But after that, you can uh, put and your idea can be uh, the, the most. Uh, so this vision, this paradigm shift, it's very important okay. at, the, at, the, at the ground level and to be... Uh, Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Samatar. So what I hear, you know, we hear is uh, capacity building and, and training beyond, you know, when, what Lotfi mentioned, beyond coding, because, you know, coding is one thing, but we need other skills, financial skills, uh, soft skills, and so on, and uh, better connecting the, uh, the ecosystem uh, cross-border. Now, maybe moving on to uh, the institutional perspective, vision uh, from Algeria. Nordin, could you share with us what is your uh, concept? How did you come about uh, building the ecosystem and what are the, the tools and the, the projects that you have in place in order to strengthen the ecosystem to better connect the different actors of the uh, Algerian startup ecosystem? Okay, um, I'll try to um, summarize the Algerian experience these two last years. Um, we started, uh, first of all, to try to identify what is the innovative business. As Steve has mentioned, making the separation between SMEs, classical SMEs, and innovation business. So that was the first challenge, and <coughs> believe me, it's not easy to do it. Um, maybe the approach we adopted actually is that uh, just try to uh, work on uh, a different paradigm, uh, saying, okay, uh, startup should start from the problem, not from the solution. And this is uh, maybe can have a lot of impact on the field. So let's, let the startup have to take a challenge and then make a solution and business be behind. And uh, uh, the, uh, the classical SMEs will go the other side and again put solution and make it on the market. So we, we try to use this paradigm and then to identify who is startup, who is classical SMEs. And believe me, uh, we, we, are, we are happy about, uh, about the result we got because actually um, from, from 2020 to today in Algeria we have uh, what we call label, which is equivalent to the Startup Act. And this label is given to the companies who is doing innovation and then making separation with classical SMEs. That was the first step. And then uh, once you identify these companies, you have to make an appropriate funding system. And then we launched the Algerian Startup Fund. So even um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the approach is different, the funding system will be different. And the mindset is different. So this is why in 2020 or so at the end, we launched uh, an equity-based public fund uh, which actually maybe you heard about it yesterday is about 500 million dollar actually but but this action the government has uh, done it because uh, we have to identify these people but the financial system was not adapted to their needs uh, as there is a risk to take and there is also a different mindset to deal with so uh, Algerian startup fund has contributed a lot to make a first stone of this ecosystem. And then in the third part, we launched an accelerator, uh, Algeria Venture, who is organizing this, uh, this event. So Algeria Venture is, how, is uh, organizing this event on the logistical part. But what was important for us is that uh, when, when we're talking about startups, we are talking about quality, not quantity. So Algeria Venture, the, one of the most important missions was to identify what, which are the best startups and then connect them at the international level and with big companies. And also we will be back to uh, how to make these startups working on, f on problems of big companies. And uh, also this uh, helps us a lot to, to, to make some 
small champions, but hopefully they will be uh, bigger. Uh, then um, after that, so actually we can't, we started to have some data. And this data helps learn us a lot of about the ecosystem. Let me give you just one, one, uh, one uh, uh, indication. Uh, today we have more than 1K startup in Algeria. And then, uh, guess what? 60% uh, of these companies have been pre created after the legal framework. So uh, it means that the uh, lack of legal framework maybe should be an obstacle to create innovative business. You know? So, uh, and, and then lack of dedicated funding also should be an obstacle. So we were surprised how this legal framework has maybe encouraged people to create innovative business. Even people who have small business and classical business. Actually, with this legal framework, they are creating in parallel an innovative business. So you can have the uh, classical business uh, bring in solutions, and then on the other side, take engineers, make R&D, and make innovative business. And I think this is the paradigm we have to use, even uh, especially in Africa, when the challenges are big, very big. Um, the, 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 the last point that I want to highlight, that what, what our colleagues has mentioned, the, the lack of uh, very skilled talents, and this is very, very challenging for us. But believe me, in, uh, in Africa, human resources are available. Uh, maybe uh, the, the lack of experience and very high technical is, is, is a reality. But uh, let me tell you, um, uh, today, if we, if we are confident, feeling confident with these companies and give them the, 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 these challenges instead of giving solutions from abroad, we'll make them more powerful. So I think uh, if, if I have to, to maybe uh, highlight one point which is actually on what we are working a lot is how to give chance for these companies because they are all small, they are all new, but uh, and they have a lot of problem of maybe uh, concurrence with big companies, worldwide companies, and then uh, if we can give them the chance to uh, challenge the problems of African continent, uh, I, I, I think it will be a way to make them at a world-class level and then make them uh, make, making solutions for the whole world. Thank you, Nordin. Maybe, Lutfi, maybe asking you to, to react on the, these issues of data, because you mentioned that uh, the performance of the ecosystem should be evaluated not just on the number of uh, startups, but on the wealth and job creation, right? So what is the... What is the issue here in terms of uh, quality, quantity and quality of data, and also the idea of solving local problems? Right. So, um, and, th and this is a common problem. We see it a lot in universities, we see it in a lot of countries, is that you have two different classes of KPIs, uh, key performance indicators. You have the output KPIs, and then you have the outcome or impact KPIs. Um, the impact KPIs is what matters. The output KPIs are indicator, but sometimes they're indicating the wrong thing. So we see a lot of universities measuring, for example, their impact based on number of publications, number of patents, uh, number of startups incubated, number of amount of money raised. In my opinion, those are output. And that's not my opinion. It's a fact. They're output KPIs. But very often, they're not indicative of future success. The real two ones that are actually are real is the number of new jobs created, and the amount of sales you've created. So let's take, for example, one university that really changed the world uh, and created Silicon Valley, it's Stanford University. Before Stanford, there was no VC, no infrastructures. Uh, Silicon Valley was known for its figs and apricots, literally. Uh, Stanford is what attracted the VCs, the Sand Hill Road VCs, Kleiner Perkins, the law firms, and everything else. There was actually a paper that was published in 2013 by three Stanford professors showing that the overall impact of Stanford University's startups that emerged that at least had one founder from Stanford generated more than uh, 3.2 million jobs and created $2.4 trillion in revenues every year. That was in 2013. If Stanford, if those aggregate companies taken together were taken together, they would be larger than Canada in terms of GDP, and they would be the 10th largest economy in the world. So that was, and, and the reason, the root cause behind 
that impact were two things, that Stanford succeeded in embedding entrepreneurship and design thinking across all its curriculums. I mean all faculties, not just the technical ones. So this is what we have to boil down to, is we need to move to those uh, impact KPIs. But if you allow me, I would like to add one more thing, is that when, when we look at science, and we look at the impact of science, nobody, I think, can dispute that. But what is the most important scientific accomplishment ever? It's not the theory of relativity, it's not Newtonian physics, it's the scientific method. Before the scientific method, there was no science, there was just philosophy. Scientific method now is used across all scientific inquiries, both in the technical as well as in the social realms. Entrepreneurship, we have to stop thinking that entrepreneurship is kind of a do-it-yourself kind of thing, and that we just build incubators and financing is going to happen. We know today that entrepreneurship is a complex science. In fact, it's a transdisciplinary science that's probably more complex than any other science, and we need to start now approaching teaching and managing entrepreneurship as a science. So there is a scientific method that has emerged. And to expect that we just bring in incubators that where we attract uh, uh, startups that have been ill-formed, that have been mistrained or ill-trained, and expect them to succeed because we give them some funding, some office space, and some labs, is delusional. It's a recipe for disaster. It's something that's been tried and, thank you. So, so it's like getting three-legged horses that will never race, that will never even walk, let alone actually run. So we need to take that scientific in-depth form, like I'm a big fan of William Deming on his theory of profound knowledge, is that you need profound knowledge and you need practice-driven. And entrepreneurship is one of those two things. It needs that profound knowledge and method and it needs to be in practice. And that's, I think, the approach that we can bring that would allow us not copying the Silicon Valley model, but the scientific method <laughs> is the same whether you're in China or Silicon Valley or Algeria. You have to follow methodical approach. Steve, uh, would you like to maybe uh, add to this from your perspective? Yeah, let me try and not agree a bit with Lofty on one or two things. Um, I, I think sometimes, and, and I will talk for the Cameroonian pers from, from a Cameroonian perspective. And you were talking lot about job creation. I agree, we need to create jobs. But the second uh, point you were making, which was sales. And per perhaps even before I get there, one of the points that I wanted to make is this. We really need to view innovation from a different point. And, and, and in the ecosystem, one of the very important actors is the government. And we've not talked a lot about the role of government and how government is unable to innovate and therefore needs to bring almost innovation out of the normal government way of functioning. But I think sometimes, and again, very concentrated on sub-Saharan Africa is and again, specifically to a startup, we can't, I, I won't specifically be asking a startup for sales, for numbers. We want to innovate, we want to disrupt. That takes, if I'm using your scientific method, that takes time. That takes uh, breaking things, trying things, and, 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 and doing things that are not there. So we shouldn't be right now be asking our startup to say, what are your sales, right? We should be saying, that comes later. Uh, the sales come later, but right now from the beginning, we need to be able to innovate. We need to be able to create. We need to be able to, to, to disrupt. And to me, uh, I don't think sales should be right uh, an indicator from the start, right? And I, 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 don't, I, I don't think that. A lot of the, the American ecosystem, what we are looking at right now, please, let's be conscious that this guy started this years before. And, and I'm not going to go into the failures that preceded the success that we're seeing today. So let's, and, and as we're building our, uh, our African ecosystem, and, and this is why I'm, men I'm, I'm mentioning government, because yes, there's a lot of risk. There's a lot, uh, there's a lot of risk. There's a lot of trying that needs to 
take place before we get to the yes, what are your numbers and what are your sales? Interesting, interesting input. Maybe Patricia, um, could you give us your, your point of view on, on this idea of how to measure the strength of an ecosystem? Thank you. I want first to respond to, I'm, I'm not, I don't agree with him. I agree That's with okay. him. That's yeah. okay. Why? Because I'm taking my investor um, aspect. As an investor, the first thing you want to see is the KPI, the traction, and the milestone that you did to date. Okay? Innovation is good. Yes, you innovate something. But if you want to grow, you, have, you should have the traction. How do you want me to come to invest in your company if you don't have traction? It's about sales. We have to talk the real language. We can't just tell to the startup, you know, go innovate. And this is the reason why most of startups fail. This is the first one. The second one, most of them lose passion. Innovation is about passion. When you wake up in the morning, you want to change the thing. It's because you are passionate about something. You really want to change the world. But by the end of the day, as an investor, I want to see the results. I'm not going to put my money on something you're just talking about innovation. You know how many people they innovate in Silicon Valley? Every day you have more than like 10,000 innovation in Silicon Valley. They don't find, they are not funding. Why? Because there is no traction. As an investor, you have to push the people that you go. I'm waiting about one. What is your milestone to date? This is the reason why you say to the startup, start small, but think big. When you start small, you start to make your own results. This will give you a focus to know exactly where are you going. I'm not looking at investor right now. I'm starting for the bro start and I go to find uh, my, my brother, my sister. That is why they say startup, when you start to start up, the first fund is your family friend. And then you go to see uh, investor. But you go to see investor with traction. We can't, you know, one of the things I love to say, we, we have to stop lying to all those innovator people, go open your startup. Doing a business is very tough. Being an entrepreneur is tough. We cannot play about that, say, just about innovation. It's about, you know, like, I started 20 years ago. And if you ask me today if I have to become an entrepreneur, I will say no. I prefer to be an investor because I can go. I can put my energy to this company, invest, and help them now to scale up. Because it's so all about five years from now where I see myself. I want to build a sustainable company. And sustainable company is not just to say, I'm innovate. We all innovate, but we don't have fund. Why? Because of the, the lack of a resource, the lack of a skill. Okay? And we know that. As an African, all of us, we born entrepreneur. But how we do to scale up the business? This is the question. But we cannot just, we have to, you know, 10 years ago, we had the same discussion that we are having today. Today we have, we're supposed to have the discussion, how can we help the startup move from where we are today, by the end of 23, uh, 2030, what we will accomplish 80 years that live, this decade. It's about the decade, it's about the milestone we also fix on a focus to reach the goal. But if we start all the time talking about innovation, all of us, we innovate every day. But now we have to teach entrepreneur, startup, you have to reach your KPI. You will, for investor to invest in company, track session, and the milestone. Is the milestone that gives you what it tells. Even if you're supposed to say 10 pieces of the thing. But though this mindset of, you know, like business, this is what creates job opportunity. How can you, this person will innovate, but how many jobs will create? Startup means job uh, opportunity. But how can you create job opportunity if you don't have sales? You will go every day, and we know that the bank, they don't fund a startup. I think, uh, uh, just to close, I think we, here, we are here to discuss how can we strengthen ecosystem and uh, accelerator. And we have, there is a skill, also sales. What is the truth? By the end of the day, investors want to see how much you invest and how much you, you earn. Because you have tax, yes, you, I, I agree with you, we have tax, uh, we have to work on the policy government so that to help the startup for three years to be exemption of tax or the thing, yeah. If, if I can just add one thing, I think when we're talking about the ecosystem, right, I think, 
and, and all you've said is right, it's correct, but you, I think you're looking at startups at a, already at a level, no, no, right? No, no. And, 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 and to me, I think if you're going to ask, oh yeah, and, and, and again, perhaps then we need to think about how do we finance innovation at a very, very early stage? And, because, and, and what I'm hearing is, yeah, give me your sales, give me your traction. Traction in terms of what? In terms of sell? Because when you say in traction, traction should not just be in terms of sell. Maybe it should be in terms of users exactly. and, you know, and, 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 and things like that. But not, and that's what, and I, I, what you're saying makes sense. But I'm not, when I'm saying traction in terms of sales, um, and that, that, that's the, that word, I will make the difference between what's your traction between users and what's your traction. Maybe we're talking about a different stage here. Maybe, uh, Lutfi, you, you want to yeah. weigh I, I in on this? this? Is, this is a very important point. I would like to illustrate it by an example that happened at Qatar University. So uh, we've started a process of entrepreneurial transformation. Am I too loud? Sorry? Please go on. Yeah, um, I can't hear you from you. So this is a professor from Cambridge, uh, Dr. Samuel Fickery, who's a full professor, mechanical engineering at Qatar University. Two years ago, he developed a system called Clear Exhaust, which allows the 100% elimination of carbon emission from diesel engines. A revolutionary, uh, let me not call it innovation, I'll call it invention, because there is a very clear distinction that we very often miss. So he's tested it, it works, and he got a lot of interest from Tata Motors. And it works perfectly, not only in the lab, but even on the road. Yet, he had no traction. In the latest, after, one, after going through our training, we made it a requirement that no company will be able to register as a company until they make their first sale. That completely changed the dynamics. They got interest from the Baladiya of Doha in Qatar who has 4,000 vehicles, diesel, diesel vehicles, that they need to eliminate emissions. And there are, by the way, 10 million diesel engines in the US. It's a huge market. He went to them. They said, this is very interesting. We'd like to test it. He said, sure. They said, could you give us a free samples to test? He said, hold on a minute. I was taught not to give any free test anymore. You, do, you want to put a purchase order? I'll be glad to do so. Immediately, the dynamics changed. The guy said, okay, we need 10 units, but we have the public markets. We can only do it for less than 200,000 real. He said, the deal is done. He came back. Now, he was he's a 40, 50 years old professor. He was jumping up and down like a kid because he made his first sale. Any entrepreneur will tell you the first sale is a life-changing event. Thank you. That started also the dynamics of finding suppliers. So he started talking to suppliers about how to do prototyping, the cost, the terms of the supplies, the terms of the payments, the receivables, totally changed. Something that he's been doing and tested and validated two years ago is now taking on a whole different perspective. And it was because of that first sale. So the sale is not to make money. The sale is to have a real impact and to actually start creating those jobs and changing the economy because this is an innovation. My, our definition of innovation is that it's not an innovation until it has traction, until it creates real value. That value could be economic, environmental, or social, or a combination thereof, but it has to be real value. The most inventive company in the world is IBM. They have 9,000 patents every year. Are they the most innovative company in the world? No, they don't even make the top 10. Apple, in 2010, had 596 patents. They were the number one most innovative companies, and they still are. IBM today is $180 billion. Apple is $2.7 trillion. In one single day, IBM can fluctuate, uh, Apple can fluctuate by the total market value of IBM. So this is what the difference between innovation and invention. Yeah, that's, that's a big distinction. Uh, invention, you can be very inventive and not innovative because there's no market, yeah. Uh, you, you, do you want to add something, uh, yeah, Samata? I, I think uh, we are on the core of the system about our discussion about how to strengthen the ecosystem. Uh, when you figure out about uh, 
country like US. It's for us, for everybody, is a country of entrepreneurs. Can you imagine? It's only less than 10% of entire population are only entrepreneurs. So all the GAFAM, the country of GAFAM, you have only less than 10% of entrepreneurs. And unfortunately, in our countries, it uh, seems like uh, the entrepreneur is the best way to, uh, to become. Everybody cannot become entrepreneur. We need to have a type of entrepreneur can change the environment, create impact to uh, what you call challenge or uh, to, 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 to form a solution uh, to, 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 to create a solution to uh, better uh, challenge what you call the effect of climate change, how to, to, uh, to, to create a solution to, uh, uh, to form the, so, uh, a, a better life for the people, etc. So we need to redefine all the entire ecosystem need to redefine a model of entrepreneur, the Africa we want, in entire ecosystem. What kind of, I think the social entrepreneurs, it can be something we can reflex, because the, when we talk about startup, everybody talk about uh, digital, and the digital is just a way to put a solution, to define a solution to, to you know, the change life. You need to change uh, the life, uh, what you say, what you call the daily life, how to have Solving a, local solve, problems. Yeah, how to have a good health, how to have good education, how to have good energy. Uh, the IT is, okay, we have model Silicon Valley, Gafa, but in Africa, we have different type of ecosystem. So entire ecosystem at the government level, at the private sector level, civil society, we don't talk about yet civil society, the private sector, everybody can engage a model of kind of entrepreneur with an inclusion about the people don't have very inclusion yet. We talk about female. Uh, uh, I think we need more include female because in our ecosystem, in our environment in Africa, when a woman drive economy, the, the household is very better. So, uh, yeah, of course. So we need more female. Uh, more uh, women, yes. More women on the, uh, of course, startup ecosystem. SMEs uh, can, can change the game because they are really change maker. Personally, we work different uh, programs. We built with empowering women because we, the future is female. It's not just a slogan. I think. Uh, this is part of inclusion of people. We talked about earlier about the vulnerable people. Yesterday, so I saw a, a project driven by a woman uh, in, uh, in uh, the competition, disability. So this kind of, uh, I think, inclusion of people is very important in our community to challenge all, uh, you know, this, uh, this kind of. So yes, Thank you. but redefine a model of entrepreneur can change the life as a change maker. So Thank have you. a. Not, Aurore, just, just, just before we conclude, maybe Aurore, your uh, perspective. Yes, How can you. we strengthen the ecosystem towards, you know, uh, maybe fostering women uh, startups? And yes, maybe before that, I wanted to just mention uh, things that come on my mind when Steve was talking about uh, uh, sales. And we have this word or this phrase in social media Fake it until you make it. And this is the word that we are using in our ecosystem that is not good. And we, as a supporting or accelerator, we should stop this uh, way to show young or other people how we can do business. Because at the end of the day, if you can't create a job, if you can't uh, sell something, we are there to, somebody was saying yesterday, to eat or something. If you can't because you just want to innovate, we should stop this kind of mindset, this kind of thing, because it's, it's, uh, it's not good for our ecosystem. So that's why I wanted to highlight that as a, as a supporting ecosystem, we should have the same word and we should stop faking things because we have so many solutions. We are building on Akaton. They don't, at the end, it's just to make fun media visibility, but they, are, they don't solve real problems, so we should stop it. Now, uh, coming to your question, maybe what I can add is that uh, for women's side, I think uh, a lot have to be done to, for women because we have, when we are talking about entrepreneurship, it's the same issue, but women have particular issue 
especially women who uh, have, let's say, because we have women who are, doesn't have kids, and we have other women who are wife, who don't have, who have kids, who have more responsibility. For example, when it comes to finance, how many women do you know have raised funds until today in Africa? How many women can go to the bank and have loan without asking the permission of the husband, everything? And we know we have in Africa this thing about education. Many of the women are not more educated. We still have this thing. How women who are not educated, who cannot go to the bank because they don't have like financial education uh, mindset, can go to say, okay, this is at the stage of my startup, I want to grow. Which step can I follow? So people, policies, and all the ecosystem should think, okay, we want to enable our ecosystem, it's good. But women have main issues that we should solve also. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, we're uh, unfortunately uh, reaching the end of, uh, of this panel. What I would like you to do, maybe I know it's a tough act, but just think of one action that is a priority uh, in your context, maybe in your country, maybe in your region, just one action, action that could strengthen the ecosystem. So we'll start with Nordin. Okay, thank so you. So each one. Um, let me tell you also another number from our experience in the uh, Algerian Startup Act. A huge number of products, projects are still in the idea stage. And I'm using the, 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 the term huge. And actually with Aventure, we are working on making a prototyping center, public prototyping center. Uh, this way, uh, I think we will maybe have two impacts, measurable impacts. The first one is that to make these people, what I call uh, dreamers, uh, being in, in front of the reality, making their prototype and being in front of the real world. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with you. The, the investor will uh, only believe in sales, in something real. So bringing the gap between the idea and the real product, I think maybe we have, the government have to support this aspect because there is few investors who will do that. Um, the other point is that, is that the, um, this guy uh, coming with idea uh, are, are tackling real problems, but sometimes they don't have the, uh, the, the way to, to, to achieve their dream. So maybe um, a politi a governmental political can, uh, can make uh, support on this and then make people maybe uh, having uh, more impact. And really, uh, this way we can also make, um, enhance the skill of people because uh, one, someone one has an idea, if he will uh, we have support to uh, make it on, uh, on the field, uh, maybe he will make a pivot or, uh, or something other and can uh, be more efficient and then hopefully launch a business one day. Thank you. So now 30 seconds, just one action. 30 seconds. You're next. Okay, uh, what I can say just about that is that uh, concerning the ecosystem, yesterday we started talking about policy and everything. We should just also think about inclusion, how we can help women to have more access to resources and how things can be facilitated, not because they are women, just because they face more problems than other entrepreneurs. Okay, more inclusive towards women. Thank yes. you. Steve? So uh, the, <clears throat> I think the, 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 the ecosystem, as that word suggests, is everybody um, uh, gets involved. But I think what needs to be done in terms of strengthening this or our ecosystem is really getting a very strong political will, but allowing the private sector to actually engage and implement. Co-creation. Thank you. Thank you. Samatara? Yeah, uh, I totally agree with what you said, but um, I think more, enga yeah, more engagement between all the stakeholders uh, and include uh, academia and RT sector at the table to define uh, solutions for our uh, problems. So a multi-stakeholder approach. Multi-stakeholder because the academia and RD are missing on the table. So the private sector, gov sector, and also academia and research to enhance this uh, you know, ability to define a local solution for local problems. Thank you. Lutfi? 
So if I were to just try to keep 30 seconds, uh, elevator pitch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I would say that we need a rallying cry that will unify all of the African countries and be inclusive in terms of male and female. And that rallying cry, I believe, is around sustainable entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship that would have the triple bottom line, both in terms of economic, social, and environmental development. The African continent stands to lose the most from global warming. I don't know how many people still don't believe in global warming, but it's real. But it also stands to win the most by, by essentially redefining entrepreneurship as green entrepreneurship, as essentially the same entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship done right. This is an opportunity for us as an African continent not only to solve existential problems, but also to leapfrog everyone else. Because there is actually evidence that there are $12 trillion of incremental capital development and 380 million jobs by addressing the challenges of sustainable entrepreneurship. So using the ESG and beyond the impact uh, framework, SDGs and so on. And also. Okay. And, but, but bring it to the entrepreneurs, not to the large companies, as most other countries are actually doing today. Okay. Thank you, Otfi. Patricia, you have the last word. <laughs> yes. I will talk more about what we can do. Seconds. Yes, one, one. For women, uh, I believe it's the time for women to get their own bank to finance women entrepreneurship. This is the only way we will path the way for women to go to another level. Okay. Thank you. Let's give a big round of applause to our uh, distinguished panel.